G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, we're back into the uh, revival or rebirth of my DC lathe conversion, which I did quite a number of years ago, and then cooked the motor. So I'm stripping down the lathe. I got the tail stock off and the carriage over the right chucks off because I've got to go d dive down the back of the headstock from this side as well. And we're getting into it this morning. The, the belts are off the drive pulley on the motors off uh, around the back the uh, the munchy uh, packets gone from the fuse block so uh, and I've made a bit of room to work around here cleared the floor so I've got uh, a bit of room I have to unbolt the the rear chip shield and swing that out the way to try and get the motor out and I've got to take that crossbar out as well because it's very snug fit as you can see there's there's not a lot of room in there so uh, space is at a premium on this job and being an end mount motor you know it makes it worse uh, that's why I couldn't possibly reuse the fan on the uh, treadmill motor uh, as much as I would have liked to there's just not enough room not enough shaft length just can't be done anyway uh, yeah I'll show you what else I got well, here's the new blower, and it's a uh, it's a Hoover dust step vacuum cleaner from the 19 <laughs> who knows 60s if you're lucky. Could even be older. It's pretty ancient. I got two of these little jiggers, and I got God knows where I got them from, but they've been laying on the shed for ages, and they're good for cleaning out the car. You know, they they're good little vacuum cleaners, and. Uh, it only draws 160 uh, watts, so it's pretty low, pretty low consumption. So it's good, and it's not overly noisy, um, and that's good too. And on the back, where it's open, because uh, I'll be using it as, as a blower, not a sucker, because you don't want to be sucking with something like this, because you'd be sucking all the hot air from the DC motor through your vacuum cleaner, and I don't think it would make it. Uh, last very long so we'll be pumping the air out with this and we're on the back here where there would normally be a, a dust bag to catch the dust because they're pretty primitive little vacuum cleaner these things you know everything goes through the impeller and <laughs> if you suck anything uh, hard up it doesn't do the impeller a lot of good because it's only aluminium but anyway uh, it's got plenty of mumbo for blowing and you can see over here I've made up an adapter the silver ring in the bottom is where the bag used to go on, and I machined that off. And I fitted a, uh, a downpipe, plastic PVC downpipe reducer um, on the back of that. And then I made up a, an adapter to allow me to put on the, uh, the nitrite piping, and then to that will go the black bar, expandable, flexible ribbed pipe that's going to. Uh, it's going to feed into the motor and I'll have this thing on the floor and I'll have a fair length of pipe coming up to the motor so if any debris goes in the front it will it won't get right up the pipe it'll you know anything hard any screws come loose or anything I don't want them going in my nice DC motor so they wouldn't make it up the pipe and uh, but yeah she blows good I won't turn it on right now because I've got a bit of Loctite drying on it so I'll get on to uh, ripping out the motor and uh, yeah, there's uh, okay. the motor that came out. It's a uh, 750 watt motor. It's a good, big, decent motor, and uh, yeah, done a lot of work. And over there, of course, is the 1.5 horsepower. So this is a uh, three-quarter horse, and that'll be 1.5. But of course, you run DC motors at less than their full output. So you're running that at say 60% of its uh, rate of capacity to preserve the brushes and everything. Um, so in effect, you could say that's probably a one horsepower motor uh, in, in real life as far as actual use. I mean, you've got the full one and a half if you want to crank it up, but it may not last as long. Um, oh, I made up another plate to cover this brush cover, uh, brush port. They had a plastic cover, which wasn't very good, so I made up something similar to the other side just to block it off. And here's the hole for the uh, temperature sensor to go in. That's drilled right through the case into the exhaust port. So the probe will go in there and uh, that'll measure my uh, motor temperature or the air temperature. So it should, should work good. I'm uh, looking forward to trying this out again. 
Well, the motor's in, the pulley's on, and uh, the drive system's all set up uh, how it was. That's the slowest speed. I'll set it up on the slowest speed just to see what sort of range I've got. But for now, that's that. Um, this is the adjuster here for the intermediate pulley on the CQ9325s. You definitely want that. They're a mongrel to adjust without that. So that's just something I knocked up, just a bolt. Moves it up and down. And the pulley is uh, its a bit of a weird one, but it'll give me a few different ratios onto the intermediate, and then I've got a couple of others from the intermediate across. I mean, that's the slowest speed, and that's... <laughs> I think that's about uh, when near one of the top speeds, so there's quite a range I can get out of just this simple pulley. I had to take the door off, the cover off, to get the motor in. I just couldn't reach around the door, so the door came off. It's funny, as you do these jobs again, when you revisit them, you think, oh, yeah, that's how I did it last time, you know, but at the at the time you're sort of struggling a bit, you think, oh, damn thing, and uh, then it all comes back to you. I'll show you around the back. Right, well there's the new motor in Sierra Beauty, eh? In its cradle. It's the same cradle as I used before. And it's a base mount. And, uh, yeah, that fits beautifully. Um, it's longer than the last one. It's a heavy duty, it's a quite a, it's a big hunk of motor, this one. It's probably a good quarter longer than the last one I had. I'll have to move the, the inverter up higher because the port that I'm feeding the air in through on the back of the motor is basically coming out about here. So I'll have to move it up and I might even swing it over and have it just coming. So the bigger heat sink at the back of it is facing up and that'll be a good chip guard. And uh, yeah, so I swing the whole thing anti-clockwise and have it the big alloy plate horizontal and then I might even mount my on-off switch on the this section of the alloy plate here because the, then I can run the the 180 volt DC cables up through that and have a switch box on top and so it all should work out pretty good so now I've got to basically uh, take the take this off and uh, get the uh, the splash guard into position cut a hole for the uh, reworkler this uh, guard here for a, a hole to have the uh, air pump, you know, feed coming in through and uh, yeah, it's well on the way, it's all going to work out pretty good I think, so uh, yeah, no oh well, so I mean whether I get this done in two videos, I may not, I might have to make it three, so uh, to see how much I can get done today, I've been on it a fair bit, so I'll see how much footage I've got and we'll take it from there. Okay, hang in there. Here's the new motor from the uh, the other side of the lathe from the bedside and uh, as you can see it fits in pretty neatly so uh, yep looking good oh well the day's finished for today I've run out of time so I'll wire up the uh, the electrics tomorrow and uh, mount the, the box somewhere around here after have a bit of a look see. There's a couple places I could put it across that way or even across here as long as the door does not hit it when it swings around. Well, that's it for now so uh, I'm going to go and have a beer. Catch ya.